Whitehall sesquicentennial. So these are postcards uh, within the city of Whitehall. Now, uh, there's zillions more. Uh, the resorts. Mary Zinn, by the way, was the leader of all the resorts as far as cards. Yay! Who's Mary? Sorry. Uh, there, there, I got to stand by that. Uh, I think uh, only the Yacht Club prece uh, supersedes them. The Yacht Club, you know, and uh, the Owasapi Scout Camp, all the resorts, Montague, Whitehall, on and on and on, on infinitum. I got interested in uh, this in, uh, in my youth about 30 years ago. Uh, Leela Dalton, who worked at the Cannery Credit Union, uh, one of her daughters, Nancy, was uh, in Petoskey working at the hospital and she moved down to uh, uh, Kalamazoo. And uh, her brother-in-law, a uh, fellow, very good friend of mine from uh, Grand Haven, Fred Lutke, and I moved her. And uh, she called me that spring that there was a postcard show down there. And I went to it and uh, I've been off and running. Ironically, it was last Saturday and on the way back I was thinking all of the original postcard dealers are dead or gone. And it's been a complete turnover since uh, I started. Roughly, uh, postcard, the golden age of postcards was about 1900, 1920, give or take. Uh, up until uh, 08, you could only put your address on the back. And uh, any writing, they had a little narrow white column on the bottom of the picture. And people wrote all over the pictures and stuff like that. But 08 was one of the milestones. Uh, cards prior to World War I, printed in Germany. Um, they colorized them. Uh, to, I've got cards of the same site that uh, three or four different shades, and but it was the same original picture. After that, a lot of them were still done in Germany, but uh, they were printed also in this country. C.G. Pitkin was the biggest producer of cards, bar none. There was a Conley Drugstore, which is where the local pub is now, which also put out a lot of cards. Uh, Conley was Grace Atkinson's uh, grandfather, and in Montague, Ripley Drugs did cards. There was a company in Chicago, Kurt Tech, that they have all their records in Tech in Chicago, in Lake County, and they produce cards uh, by gangbusters. In the White Lake area, there was the Photoshop, a man by the name of Major, did cards, did all kinds of cards. Uh, you could also take your own uh, camera, take pictures, and have them made into postcards. So there are cards out there that are one of a kind. Uh, there's a couple cards floating around that I don't have of Whitehall that I know are out there. <laughs> I have one card that's in here, I'll show you. I looked for it for 20 some years. And I think the guy died that had it in his collection and his wife sold it. But anyway, we're going to start because we don't have a lot of time. I drew this in because while Nancy Fleming was from Montague, uh, her coach and the lady that created the program for her was Grace Atkinson from Whitehall. And uh, her son, Saber, migrated in high school uh, class, as was uh, Ms. Decker over here. Uh, we're just kids yet. And she wrote the script, so I got to know who she was. Bourbon Jackson did that picture. It's great. And uh, next. Is that, can you see that okay? Yeah. Was that They're going to have. Yeah. That's the best. Um, yeah. They, they did the backs of these. I really didn't want that. But you can see Bourbon Johnson right on Mish. And that's uh, one of the clues for cards. Uh, most photographers did put the, their name on the back. Let's go. I want it to be equal. This is not a postcard. It's the only thing you'll see that isn't a postcard. But Whitehall's lady claim to fame is Ruth Thompson, the first woman to be elected to Congress from the state of Michigan. And there's a lot of people who think it was that lady from Detroit. But they're wrong. It was from Whitehall, Michigan. And she also was the first woman to be a judge in Muskegon County, and the only one up until Maria Lattice. Let's move. What year, Norman? 
Uh, she was in the 50s. Uh, this is uh, a character from Whitehall who, uh, this was a card who was known as Popeye. We'll move it down just a little. And his name was Shills, August Shills. And uh, that, there were a lot of cards produced, uh, if you will, sort of human interest cards and stuff like that. And he was one of the Whitehall, Michigan town characters, I guess. We don't have characters now. Come on. Charlie, uh, related to Charlie. Yeah. I had to put this in because Alvin Youngquist, who grew up in Whitehall on Mears Avenue, was the creator of the Wide Flyer. It's no longer, uh, but it is sailed extensively in the Carolinas, in Illinois, Ohio, Indiana, uh, Arkansas, and other places. And that's a picture of Alvin with Y1. Okay? Why do we no longer have because uh, it's a long story. <laughs> and, and, we'll and here's another picture by Bourbon Johnson of two wives on White Lake. And uh, again, you can see, if Tanya will move up just a little, it says the Y uh, White Lake is uh, nationally known for its scenic beauty, its yacht for the White Flyer. The uh, award for their national regatta is known as the Alvin Youngquist Trophy. And uh, is Ruth Pitkin here? <laughs> I specifically have something for Ruth, and I'm not going to tell you how and why she gets this, but this is a copy of that postcard Thank of you. the Y Flyers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> and this is a, was a promo from the 40s uh, put out by the Chambers of Commerce with a map of Montague Whitehall. As you can see, we still had a railroad. Uh, and some of the various resources. Lakewood uh, was a very, very heavily publicized area in Chicago. It was, uh, the lots were given away by the Chicago Sun, and they promoted it extensively. There's a bazillion carts on Lakewood. They had a narrow gauge railway going from where the railroad crossed Whitehall to the old, uh, to into Lakewood. You remember that railroad? Okay, good, and so does uh, uh, Mrs. Ingalls, Jeannie Ingalls remembers it. Here's some aerial shots. I wanted, I've got several. Notice where the Whitehall Marina is, how that's, uh, you'll see how it's much different. Uh, a Tammy, if it shows up at all. Uh, and boats in there, and now, of course, that's all gone, and this is getting all filled with weeds and weedy and everything else, and uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's not like it, it was then. Let's move on. And here's another one. You know where the crosswinds is? Well, these were a couple of White House tenders, and at one time there was another one right in here. Uh, Jack Lyons purchased those with the idea of converting them uh, and uh, running them as package freighters from New Orleans to South America. And by the time, you know, he got involved with it, and. Uh, working on them, uh, the whole transportation picture had changed. So they ended up getting scrapped out. I know one went to uh, Sturgeon Bay and the Rhone Salvage Company took the engine out of it for a tug. And here's another area, and you can see that with the city marina now there, and this uh, is uh, White Oak Landing, the crosswinds, this is where those ships were, uh, and uh, how it's changed. Note the tower by uh, Verizon, now Frontier, and that's gone. Uh, just how things are changing over the years if you can obtain a procession of those. And again, another aerial shot from a little different angle, looking maybe from uh, Livingston to Vision Street, and you can see the, uh, the, down, the downtown and, uh, and uh, looking towards uh, the lake, okay. It's uh, this would have been in the 60s. Yeah, that's cool. That Indian there, that's Hiawatha Penrod. They're also still in business. They do some stuff. That's pretty similar to one of the other aerials that you saw. Note here the bolts. Um, just yeah, uh, when that marina opened, it was full. It had a waiting list of uh, like 20 some. Uh, people and uh, you don't want to look at here's Chambers Marina again. 
He had boats all up and down. These buildings are all gone. It's just how the evolution. The road has been reconfigured. And uh, this is gone. It was the lumber yard. Actually, it was a shingle mill originally. Moving on. Uh, oh, and uh, again, the car, this is the park before uh, the marina was built. There was a little slip in here. You'll see some pictures of where that slip is pertinent to the lake. And this was the dock uh, out on the front of the park. It was a period of time where the park uh, it was underwater. I remember uh, going across it with Don Armstrong from the uh, bait shop there in a duck boat, and the water was up to uh, Lake Street. Is that when the trailer park had to move out? That was uh, that's, I think, why they moved out. But uh, the park. yeah, there was. A, you'll see some trailer parks. Let's go. The Log Legion building is there. Yeah. Yeah. That's right there. That little uh, was the boat. Yeah, and uh, you know, but before that it was launches. And there's the, the boats again. Let's move. And some of these are not total word. These are the Fred Norman paintings in the bank. Bourbon Johnson did a whole series on those. I threw a couple in. Uh, again, in the 50s and that. Postcards aren't what they were today. You put emails or does that silly text thing? But uh, okay, let's keep let's keep going. Uh, and that's another one of it. Uh, the horses and Dan Yates book. Now there's the old high school. I spent uh, I think four years of my life there. Uh, and uh, this is uh, there's some more shots of that. This is uh, the uh, high school. This is where they park the buses outside now. Well, okay, now this is the only picture I have with the with the uh, gym, and uh, that gym was converted to a bus garage. And I won't say who it was, but when I was in college, I had this brilliant idea. I came home, I went up to the superintendent, and I said, you know, that could be a community center. You could uh, have beautiful wood floor, you great stage. They did minstrel shows on it. And he says, well, you have to remember that we'd have to put a heating system in it and hook the plumbing up. Well, when they made a bus garage, those were the first two things they did. I still think my idea was better. <laughs> and this is the only one that I have ever found of the elementary. Uh, and you'll note dirt roads. That building was built 49. 50 was the first year. Uh, we were in second grade, I think, when they opened that building, weren't we? Uh, Mrs. Decker remembers better than me. Let's go. Oh, back up just a second. Uh, in 1960, there was a big drive to find a site for Grand Valley. And the Whitehall and White Lake people had a real campaign. And uh, they sent out hundreds of postcards of this area to all the people. You can see Detroit. Well, somebody didn't send their cards. And I don't know where I found them, but see, New College, we are education conscious. The city of Whitehall offered the property, which is now the Howmet Industrial Complex from Benston Road to White Lake Drive. And they were gonna uh, give it to them. And uh, it was a done deal. You know, Seidman was the chairman. He was from Grand Rapids. They went through the formality. But it was going to be Grand Rapids, you know. But anyway, they really worked hard at it. Now, this is an interesting series, a guy by the name of Harlow Elliott from Shelby. And when you say his name up, Shelby, they, uh, because he was their Bourbon Johnson, if you will. And uh, his cards have a little circle E. And as far as anyone knows, the only time he came down here is when they had a washout down by the Colby Street uh, bridge or tunnel or passageway. And that's what these cards relate to. And I've put some of them in. And you note the engine, that, so folks, that, that was a while back. Let's keep moving them. You know about what date, Norm? Uh, early 1900s, I'd say, well, 1922? Yeah. I, I, I even thought it was earlier, but uh, let's go. <coughs> Okay, this is the crowd standing there uh, watching, and uh, it says that the crowd at the washout, and I believe that's the building that Dick Lapin owns now, the first one on the uh, 
south oh, side and the right side if you're coming from Ryan. And there you can see they had flat beds and they threw the dirt onto the flat beds and pulled it out of there. And I suspect it just got thrown in the water on both sides where Coval Park is. You know, back then you didn't have to test it and send it to a lab and do all the environmental things. And that's the way they got it out of there. Also, you see there, uh, uh, there's some people, but you're going to see a horse in a second. And they were dragging. Everybody's got a hand. Nobody's yeah, got a hand. yeah, they all got hands. I think maybe we got some, got a veteran there from the WW, or from the Civil War, because there were some around here into the early 1900s. Um, and these are guys digging on the washout. Uh, okay. Some more. And then, and you can see, now I see the horse back there. Uh, they, uh, they also had a drag where they dragged the dirt out behind the horse and then they shoveled it up on the flatbeds and uh, got it, uh, got it, the tracks clean. And you can still recognize this from down there. Uh, this would be on the side by the uh, bowling alley. And you see there's the concrete wall in back of the World War II Memorial. Okay. And one more, there's the horse. The horse who made it through. Okay. And uh, he was, and this, this guy's probably the, the supervisor. You can see how hard he's But look at him, you know. They all got hot ties, white shirts. Okay. The, uh, the railroad station was not always where it is now. It was down below where Leonard and Edna lived. And, uh, below the Halmet Playhouse. And uh, if you, there's, uh, at the bottom of that street was the water tower, and then some buildings, and then over. So um, probably closer to Sophia. And then you see here's a uh, passenger car, and there's a, a spur going off. And uh, there were, if you look at the, uh, and Roger uh, Sharmer is an expert on these uh, Sanborn maps, if you look, there were several spurs that went off, but there was a spur there that went off to the tannery because they got their raw hides, came in, uh, and uh, uh, bark in later years, everything all came by uh, rail car. And in my youth, in junior high school, I delivered the Grand Rapids Herald to the tannery, and I had to take one into the room where the hides came off the train. And boy, I tell you, you knew you were in that room. And so I'd take, a, I'd take a deep breath, and I'd run like mad, and these guys would jump out in front of me. I won't even start to tell you about the stuff. Right? Oh, you know, I'd run back. But now you see that, that card, see how it's got the white on it? That's for writing, and this on the back side of it is from your address. You weren't supposed to write on it. Now, here we come into some fun times. Here's the uh, uh, Kobe Street. Uh, this is G's Five and Dime. This is G and Car Hardware. And this is the Swedish Festival. And that's the Soil Conservation District. And it looks like the thing just got pulled out of the swamp. <laughs> but, uh, you know, they got a tree and they got it all decorated. But now, note, if anybody has an interest in downtown, note the angle parking on both sides. <laughs> and, uh, okay, let's go. Uh, and again, the Swedish festival and a, a team of horses with uh, a load of logs. This is a standard oil truck uh, decorated up that made fuel oil deliveries and things like that. And I will tell you, the Tango Park is Swedish dancers. There's a couple of different scenes. And this was uh, along the lake, uh, maybe at the park, city park. Uh, <laughs> And see here they're out, another shot of them. The maypole. Here's the uh, Swedish festival, Venetian parade. Is that uh, CG's boat? Yep. CG Pitkin, I thought it was. Clarence Pitkin was leading, of course, because he was heavily involved in this. Tamry smokestack, the Tamry water tower. You know, that was made out of cypress, and you know what they did with it? 
They cut it in little pieces and threw it over and all the way. Thought they were going to burn it. Yeah. And here's to all the monkey mucks for the Swedish uh, parade and uh, down at the dock. You can see some of them are dressed in Swedish costumes and I guess they, what they what passed for Swedish costumes. Okay. And that's uh, another uh, sweet, a different shot of the Swedish festival. Okay. Uh, the Goodrich boat, uh, this happens to be the Georgia. You can tell because it had that curved uh, uh, structure on the side. That's tied up at the city park, uh, Whitehall. That's where, why they named it Goodrich Park because they couldn't agree on a name and the Goodrich boat tied up there. But that one is the Georgia. We know the Georgia, the Alabama, the Carolina, uh, all came into uh, White Lake and we think the Indiana, but uh, not positive the Indiana. There's a uh, taken from the water, that's the dock at the foot of the, uh, at Goodrich Park. And uh, this house is gone. Uh, that's the building of Dickie Lappins. And these are all gone, but this is uh, where they, they came in to uh, Whitehall. And that is the city park again. This is the slip. Someone mentioned the Sea Scouts. That's the slip at the very end before it got filled in, the Sea Scouts. But you know, we've got a few more. This is a launch. And the way people went up and down the lake was if you were staying at a certain resort, you wanted to go downtown or at your house, you ran a flag up out on your dock. And uh, they went up and down the lake, they saw that and uh, they would pull over and pick you up and take you down and then go the ride back. And you notice this is a bigger one. Uh, it's got a lifeboat on it. There were a couple of boats, the Kerry Ryerson, the most well-known one, that uh, came up from Muskegon before the Goodrich line started coming into Whitehall. They would, uh, it would come as far as Muskegon and then you'd hook a ride on one of those uh, and make, come up to White Lake. And uh, this is showing some of those launches out. Uh, see, look at the steam that one is kicking up. Okay. Here's, the launch, here's that same slip uh, in uh, Goodrich Park. Uh, and this would be about where the, uh, <clears throat> the bathhouse and restrooms are for the marina now roughly that location. And they had a little gazebo out there at the end, and they had uh, this slip, and the boats would come in, tie up and leave, tie up and leave. And you can see there it looks like a parasol or a uh, lady has. And these are all people coming and going uptown to wherever their, their summer home was, uh, the resort they were staying at, or whatever. Bob Schmidt here. But ask Bob sometime about the power lines that went across White Lake. Okay, uh, there were power lines that went across and Bob sailed down one Sunday morning and his mast hit the power lines. Put everybody in Montague White all out. <laughs> okay. And again, that's uh, the uh, boat land landing and that shows a different slip, a different boat in there. That might be the Esther, I'm not sure. We got. I wanted the Esper, I think, in here, which was Dowie's. Uh, now, uh, this is the Willow, and the Willow was one of the boats that went up and down and also uh, brought people from Muskegon. Uh, you can see it's fairly good sized. It's not a big boat, but it, uh, you know, it's got, a, got some cover. Uh, and the Esther, here's the Esther. And uh, another one, that's not the will, I don't know which one that is. But this was, and it, they had written on there, Dowie's Launch, which it was. This was later made into a tug uh, by Otto Fricke down in uh, Grand Haven. And uh, I know that there are people that have tried to uh, track it down. Uh, George Byam has worked on that. And I think it's down in Holland, sitting in a barn down there, but uh, haven't done anything with that lately. Uh, and uh, this is a, another one of the willow, 
think they doubled and did this because I know I did. This is a picture when it was, and it was called a tourist camp for a while. They actually had camping at the park where Goodrich Park is now. That was a campground. And there was a building there up towards the front where they sold pop and other odds and ends, and they had restrooms. And uh, th th this was one of the early pictures of it. This was Kirk Tech, the Chicago outfit, did that particular postcard. Okay, keep us spinning. And now you see what that slip that we showed you with those old bowls. This is uh, when it was a campground. See all the, the uh, trailers? It was a trailer park. And uh, it was a good place to have it. Like Montague has their trailer park now. People can walk uptown. They can walk to the grocery store. Same idea. You can walk up to A&P, Kroger, Connell's, uh, Leonard and Edna's, Pitkins, Dalkers. Um, you know, it was really a, a good place to be. You could fish. Uh, and again, another sh aerial shot showing uh, this is when uh, after the campground, because uh, high water and that closed the campground, and then for a while it was just a big sea of green. Uh, during the centennial, which if this is the sesquicentennial, you can figure out how long ago that was, but uh, they, built a, they built quite a platform right in here. I remember uh, Paul Jensen and uh, a bunch of guys working, I don't know if Normie worked on that pit, yeah, yeah, he probably was, but they, were, they worked on building this because they had some ski shows and stuff for the centennial just a few years ago. Okay. We were in high school, so we were just kids. And uh, again, that same slip, and uh, you can see a tent over there, and this is the city dock and uh, White Lake, and uh, this is a private boat, and somebody's got like a fishing boat, a rowboat, uh, but these are all within the city of Waiola. Look at that car there. Can you see the car? See those old cars? Uh, they, yeah, look at the tire there. Okay. And that's uh, Clarence Picton's boat, I believe. Again, tied up there. And again, in the background, you've got the, uh, you've got the um, trailers. And that, that's the trailer. And uh, more of them, look at the tires. Uh, and, they, and this is a different shot. These are different uh, uh, trailers. So, you know, they had a lot of them. And there's one here, I'm hoping it pops out. It will in a while. Uh, this is the Carolina. Now, you notice the difference. The Carolina doesn't have those uh, struts or whatever they call them on the side. And the Carolina was the one that apparently appears to have came to White Lake the most often. Is that the biggest one? Uh, they were pretty close in size, I think. And again, look at this car here. This is at the, the city park. So, you know, there were people that went camping in the 20s and 30s. And uh, it was a very popular campground. It, uh, it had a lot of people camping in it. And there's another one. This would have been like about coming straight down from Colby Street if you continue down into the park, uh, and this was the sidewalk that went down to that slip. The slip was right about there, and all these trees are gone. The, a lot of those trees drowned. They died in the high water. I mean, after the high water left, uh, they were just dead. There were a few of them that survived. They got taken out for the arena. Here's the one I was hoping for. Is that your car? That's, that, this car still exists over in Montague. <laughs> Uh, I don't think any of you have enough money to buy it. <laughs> the gentleman that owns it is right in the front seat here. What is it? It's a, what year is it? 46 Chevy. It's a 46 Chevy and it belonged to your... Carlson Adams. Carlson Adams. Nine hundred and some dollars. New. <laughs> Carlson Adams. Right. Now here's a shot of that same park uh, within the last few years. And you can see that again is when it had a lot of boats in it. Townsend and Smith. Okay. Aerial shot again. Uh, marina full. Shelmer's full. That's after the marina was built, before Shelmer's was torn down, and uh, all the buildings were there. Uh, warehouses, American Legion, uh, Shelmer's buildings. They're all gone. Uh, the uh, planing mill, uh, which was Cobra Lumberyard, gone. A um, lot of changes along the lake, okay? 
Okay, now here's a dirt, here's a dirt Kobe street. And here's uh, Pitkins right here, give me a reference. And uh, and then the building next to it, this one I remember is the AP store. Yeah. And then uh, next to that was uh, the bar, uh, which way back when was Common Market, and the, the post office. Yeah. And then on this side, these buildings here are all gone, been replaced with uh, uh, the uh, Pitkin Professional Building, with uh, the building that the form was in, and uh, the Masonic Temple. Uh, Let's see if there's one. No, nope, because it wasn't mailed. If they're mailed, they give you a good, a good view. Albert Mears had the Hotel Mears, which is where the, uh, it's an empty building now, where uh, Hunts Hardware had their rental. And you can see this one is they've got a fine livery there of cars out on Colby. Still a dirt road. Um, and uh, that burned in, I guess, what, the 40s? 47 to 48. Is that the Colonial? Colonial. Yeah, yeah, it became the Colonial Inn. And my mother, you would tell about, when they were down there and saw it burn. Okay. That's right, that, but I don't remember. That. The only big one I saw was the Franklin House. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I saw the uh, Goody Goody Bird. Okay, well, I saw that. <laughs> that, that was big. Okay. Again, the Hotel Mears. This building right here is part of Bell Furniture. It's the part that was next to the Ford garage. And then right in here, they built uh, what's, what's now Bell's also, but it was the Pike garage. And Dexter King uh, had a picture that Mr. Kasner got from him. So we are gonna be in, there's a book coming out next summer about the Michigan Pike. It's being done by uh, Chris Byron, who's the, uh, uh, a librarian, Grand Rapids Public Library for the Michigan section. Great lady. And she and her husband are doing this book. We're going to get the White Lake area in it. We got a couple other possibilities. Okay, here's the dirt road. Here's a, I don't know what kind of car that is. But it's sitting on the wrong side of the road. And uh, here's the post office. Here's Conley Pharmacy. And uh, I don't know what these two were, but they uh, became the A&P. This is the store before Pitkins. And then this is Pitkins with, uh, when it was divided, the gift and stationery, and then the drugstore part. This building still survives. Over here is the present building of uh, um, Bell. Bell's, but it was G and Car and G's Five and Dimes. And uh, that's about, it, you know, you get too far away, it doesn't show. But one, stop one second, just back up if you would. No, look at the trees. And if you've seen the 1960 film, of Whitehall, Colby and Mears were dark, and it was like coming out into an opening because of the, the darkness uh, the, of the trees. And uh, now I had to put this one in, it's very similar, but notice the town leaders <laughs> checking things out, okay? And I got a couple other ones like that. There's a horse, and uh, you know, you got a dog that's not, Okay, now there's the bank by itself. And the bank building, 98 years old, we're very fortunate that the people who acquired it this time are tuck pointing all around here. And I made the comment to some people a while back that in another year you're gonna start losing bricks. I went over and talked to them, they said absolutely. The stuff behind that face brick, just Chicago County, just all powder, just deteriorated. But you'll notice, this isn't here yet. Um, that was a couple years later from the temple. Huh? I think 22 or something. Yeah, this was the 1912. Uh, now, this is the frontier room of the Colonial Hotel, which burned. And it, the frontier room was all decorated in lumber era stuff. The oxbow up there, the tongs they used to hook on the logs. Crosscut saws, uh, pipe poles, and uh, all that stuff, and it burned, so it's gone. It's moving on. Um, what town uh, wouldn't be progressive in their centennial if they didn't have a new city hall? And Whitehall built that city hall and moved into it about 1960, and they were very proud of the fact that uh, when they moved into it, they paid for it. A few years later, they paid for 
the library, which they added on to. Now, who bothers to wait till you finish? Yeah. Uh, the goody goody. Uh, and uh, over here on the left, uh, the Greaves um, building. And they, I remember they, they had an angle on the side where the cars came in, and they did lawnmower sharpening. And that was the push lawnmower. And every once, well, once a year, twice a year, my dad would tell me to take the lawnmower, so I'd have to push. I lived all the block away. <laughs> and uh, they would do the job on it. Um, OK, let's go. There was Ben Dresky's uh, uh, tailor shop. Tailor shop was in there. Doesn't the interior of Pitkin Drugs, after it was remodeled, and uh, in the aisles and back here was the lower. Uh, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> but uh, you know, interior shots are hard to find because they just didn't take that many interior shots. They're mostly in the buildings and da da da. Okay. A little bit of snow. And uh, again, uh, this is. Uh, uh, yeah, a lot of snow. Okay. The gold, the gold building was the early movie. Show. Okay, right here. Yeah. Okay. The goody goody court, uh, built by Martin Secret Dresswell Cleaners, uh, Beauty Nook, gift shop, Anderson Hardware, and of course, the Nip and Sip. Our AMW group here. The home of Swanky Frankies, Kingbirds, and Queenbirds. I mean, do, do I know the important things? I can remember would make you dime. Okay, the White Sands. Oh, yeah, that's uh, in its glory days. And uh, there is a, it doesn't, you gotta look closely, but there's a pink plumber. Remember in the 50s they had those pink plumber? Dodge had pink cars. Well, there's one sitting there. Had some good times there. I, would, I won't go into more than that. And there's a, here's a Pitkins Corner with uh, some horses and some cars, uh, both. And that was uh, the, uh, uh, yeah. And uh, okay. No. Now. We're, we're moving up in the world. We've got one stoplight. Uh, we've, we've done away with angle parking, and we now have parallel parking. And uh, the city market has a sign on the side of the building. And of course, that building is still there. Uh, that building is still there. Now, if you remember, Henry Rossler talked about working for Carl G and what a fine man he was and influenced him. Uh, the, cane poles that Henry talked about, there's a shadow there. But the cane poles were right here, and they were in a hoop. And I think Pitkins also had a hoop with cane poles. Because I know Pitkins sold uh, hunting licenses and everything. I had a cousin that would come from Chicago and go down there and get his hunting license and stuff. And this is uh, and Car. Now, furniture and undertaking. <laughs> Okay. That was the two trades that went together. You know, you came in, you bought a, you bought a, uh, you bought a bedroom set, and you paid in advance for your funeral. Whatever. And this side was the hardware. Now this building still exists, like with this configuration. It's uh, pretty good. And don't forget about the funeral parlor in the back. In the back. You know, yeah. This is the interior of the old state bank, and I remember it. With, uh, with the marble being there, but this stuff being gone, okay? And there was a table or counter over here where you could write out your stuff. And up above, well, I think now it's a solid wall, but up above they had a place there for somebody to sit at the table and uh, transact business. Well, I and them used to have their In the back down there. on the lower yep. floor. Now, the, here's Greyhound, uh, a couple Greyhound buses and uh, this is Greyhound Snowbirds, Whitehall, Michigan. Uh, that, I didn't, I've had that card for a long time. I didn't have to give very much for it. I saw it uh, on eBay. The guy had a price of, I think, 100 bucks. Did you see that on there, Gary? He had like $99 or something. But uh, 
I thought, gee, I'm rich. I don't think it's sold. But uh, they, they used to, during, I know, and this looks like it predates that, but I know during World War II, they ran two buses through here from Muskegon. And uh, men that worked at Continental Motors and that, because, you know, rationing and gas and tires, would uh, ride the bus in and the bus home. And they had two buses that went up all the way north to Ludington. And my I dad know my drove one of the buses. Is that, is that right? Yeah, yeah, he drove the second shift bus okay. from, from the White Lake area down to Okay, I know they, yeah, to, to keep the thing going. Okay. They dropped off movies and stuff off of the bus. Oh, yeah, they, they delivered all kinds of stuff. Uh, a Lakeland Motel in the city of Whitehall on Kobe Street. Again, you know, these are the kinds of things they took pictures of, okay? Uh, a different shot, this is a horse and uh, buggy, another horse and buggy in front of Pipkins. And as I said, if you look on the back of these, it's uh, published by C.G. Pipkin printed in Germany. And uh, so you wonder why they got so many. Okay, Hunt's Hardware today, is uh, on the one side was the bakery, the other side was the photo shop. And that's where Majors had their photo business and this card was printed. If you look right here, you can see a little bit, you can make out Standard Oil. And the Standard Station was there, a very classic station. I've never found a car that just yet. Um, the interesting thing there, folks, is underground wiring for the street lights, you know. And then we regress. Okay, we went, went to these things and wires, ugly. Okay, we're still a one-way town, but we've still, we've, all, we've still got the supervisors sitting there, okay? And one of the, and some of you will, will remember him, and I see his son every once in a while, Jim Reynolds, his dad, Harry Reynolds, was one Aaron of the- Reynolds, Frank Studer. Frank Sturdivant and Doc St. Clair Clark. Yeah, would sit down there and uh, they would, uh, you know, they just sat there and watch the world about it. The popcorn, the popcorn wagon, that is uh, one of the great institutions uh, that unfortunately has gone by. And uh, again, a Bourbon Johnson picture. Now, this. One I, I just picked up, yeah. actually from Gary. Uh, got a couple other ones of this building, but not as good. Here is Bell's for, uh, Furniture. This is the hotel that went. This is where uh, Dalkers was, where Gary Jessica had, and Gary saved that building. He should really be thanked because uh, that building was a flip flop. Uh, tear it down or fix it. He's probably kicking himself. Uh, <laughs> Someday you'll live long enough to get your money out of it. <laughs> anyway, uh, and then the G and car thing, you can see the bank, you can see the temple's up. And folks, that temple's probably one of the best built buildings in Whitehall. That's got steel beams in it, and you know, there's gonna be an earthquake. Now, you know this, this home services? Look at this canopy here. It's not on here, but there's a picture that Harold Kasner got from Dexter King that shows this. Uh, when it was a brand new building. And also, this was the Pike Garage. Pike Garage moved to here. They, over <coughs> here, they had, had a sign that said Pike Garage. And that's gonna make the book about the Michigan Pike. And if we can find some other things that say Pike on. Uh, got paving on that one? Uh, no, not yet. They're well, just, well, just coming. It, it just came. The angle parking, again, in downtown Whitehall, we had angle parking. You got G and car. You got G gift shop. You got the drugstore. You got there. Funnels is right in there. It doesn't jump out at you, but it's there. And the Angers Meat Market was right in there. Okay? And uh, yeah, I don't, you still, I don't think, can see them. Yeah, the roof's gone on that one. Yeah, the roof is gone, so this has to be after 1938, Seven. 37. Th that roof we showed you <coughs> collapsed from the weight of the snow. All they had were chains holding it, uh, and it, it just wasn't structurally uh, strong enough to withstand it. So it came down. Uh, 
Another shot of Kobe. Here, the uh, canopy is still there. Look at that car. And uh, over here, you can see the pumps. That was the standard station. And this is the building Hunts is in. And then it gets uh, a little fuzzy. But that's what they did. They, a lot of pictures were uh, shots of, of the streets. Uh, this is the other way. This is down where the, that mall, Little Caesars, is. Uh, the M11 garage, which evolved into the uh, Carpenters. Carpenters. But before that, it was Carlson Adams. And, that, and there were some other buildings there. Uh, this one has Oakland Pontiac. And uh, I remember one building being along there. So some of these either burned or went down. This is the Masonic Temple, the bank. And uh, then these buildings went, and, and they were replaced by the Pitkin building, the professional building. And then there was a building in here where the Whitehall Forum was. If you remember the Whitehall Forum, Louis Berman wrote a weekly column in the old hometown, which I miss. Uh, this was the telephone office. And if you drive down this alley, there's a hump there when they redid all that because the phone company had a manhole there and they cried and whined. I'd have made them rip it out, put it down. You know, I was uh, public utilities. Okay, keep going. This is the Whitehall City Park. Mary G asked me if anyone had a copy of this. Mary couldn't make it tonight. I think she's teaching at the college. But Everett G. Everett painted. And, and Everett uh, was a very nice man. This was a panel, three-part panel, that Everett did that was put up in, in Slocum Park, which is the park that the city hall is in every winter. And uh, it says, Nativity Scene in Slocum Park, Christmas time. It doesn't have Everett's name on it. But that was done by Everett G. And, uh, okay. Uh, this is the World War II Memorial. And I just thought that ought to be in there because uh, it was a card. Somebody made it. And uh, that's uh, kind of been put back in shape. It kind of deteriorated. The bank building. Um, and, of course, now all of this, if you take a look where they're repairing it, uh, <clears throat> I'm telling you, you take that face pick off and it's all out of the way behind it, folks. Look at these cars. They're right out to Colby and they're parked. Look at that. And, back, and along there. Oh, my goodness. Uh, got another little different aerial shot. Uh, and that's the Shomers Marina. We've seen that. Let's go. Angle parking, but down by where the... Uh, post office was. This was would be the bar. Uh, and you notice the Coca-Cola? There are people that go gaga just for co anything that has Coca-Cola. They, they go after it. But the post office would have been right there. It doesn't really show up. And this is the part where the city hall is. And the reason I put this one in here is look at that. There's a cannon. And uh, nobody, I have never, maybe someone here tonight remembers the cannon. Yeah. But there's another, I have another card with the cannon. And uh, I don't know, they're not Civil War cannons. Maybe they're Spanish-American. And maybe they got melted down in World War I. In 42, they went to scrap. Okay, in 42, Harold says they scrapped them for the war effort. But, but I, there was a cannon in that park. <laughs> and it now is gone, okay? Uh, this was uh, the previous building before the one that's there now, G and Car and G5 and Dime. This is, and you notice the, the sheds coming out, the, the awning, and this would be where the drugstore now, antique store is, and the hotel mirrors, and this is dirt road, all horse and buggy, horses. This is the lobby of the Colonial Inn, where you would come in and check in, and uh, Hotel Mirrors became a colonial. Uh, I'm not sure who that was. I'm not sure. Uh, the Carolina tied up at the city of Whitehall Dock. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, just a better shot of uh, here. We're down to uh, parallel parking, but uh, we got parking on both sides of the street. One lane of traffic seems to be working. You know the uh, you know the bank had uh, the stone here. I understand folks are looking at putting it back. Um, you mean replacing it, or, or did they just add it stashed away something? No, it's it, it's gone. Uh, the, the popcorn stand, keep going. Uh, again, the, the interior. These guys, I, I don't know what they did here. <laughs> now, a lot of people would write all over the cards, see, US 31, uh, State Bank, and da 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 da. But look at those cards. This is probably in the 20s, I'm guessing. Now, you see how they wrote across this? And this number is 15. There was a guy who wrote on about 100 cards, and he had a, a running narrative of all these different places, and uh, apparently mailed them to somebody in bulk. And I found the bulk of the bulk in one place, and over the years I've picked up a few more. I'm pretty close, I think, to having all of them. Tanya had some that she sold me. <laughs> now, now, you see, here's here's Page Road. Here's uh, here, here's cars, and uh, that looks like uh, two lanes in that direction, and two lanes in this direction. I know they did it with parking on both sides. And, and this is predates parking meters, which I think was a phenomenon just in the late 50s and 60s, huh? Chief Smith, wasn't it? Parking meters, just during that time. Again, a dirt road, the Pitkin building. <coughs> Keep going. Um, and the other side of the street now, you've got some, this is the white off form. This is where the sweet shop is now. Uh, and it was Volk Real Estate. Before that, it was Coble Real Estate. Ruggles. And this is where, and, and Ruggles, Coble, yeah. Ruggles, and Volk. And this is where the Pitkin Professional Building, lawyers now, just full of lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> the Plums Market, okay, when it was uh, fairly new. And of course, that's moved on down the road. But um, that's, uh, and there, this is a, a newer one. You've got parking meters now. And Whitehall had two different kinds of parking meters. They, have, they went through two sets of parking meters. Dalkers Drugstore. Here's, you see the barbershop uh, thingy. And I believe this was the parking lot for Eklund Ford yet because that looks like the pipe. And they had light bulbs strung across there. And on Friday nights, for a while, they had a deal where uh, you, you got tickets when you bought stuff downtown and then the firemen would come over there with a fire truck and they had a big drum and they'd all dump the tickets in and they'd you know, spin it and pull some numbers out to see if you won or not. Okay. That was by the barber shop. Yep, right. Yeah. Okay, keep going. I don't know what they did. That's the inside of Pit Tents. Sunken Garden. Sunken Garden. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and uh, now, I like this shot because here we are out on Colby, and you can see there's all this stuff is gone on this side of Colby. The Pitkin building's there, but look at what's down there. The Carolina. Right down at the foot of Colby Street, you can see the Carolina. And that's when it came in. Now, I had to put this in because I told you that people could have their own postcards made. That's the house that I spent 30 plus years in. And those are my relatives, grandparents, right there, and some uncles. And uh, that's the house in the 500 block of Colby Street in Whitehall. Yeah, see how little those trees are? Some of them have grown up and been cut down. W.C. Coates was um, village mayor uh, back in the 40s, early 40s. And uh, he's got the sign on the building that's there now uh, across from Pitkins. Uh, there's a GM car in the bank, 
And again, a different shot. There's the photo store again. I hope they give them. Uh, this is, uh, again, the cannon. See, that's the park, and there's the second one I've ever seen of that uh, cannon. Okay. Yeah, they, it was a canopy. It was dark. It actually was shaded. And there's the bank. You see that they had a bunch of little trees there. Uh, Masonic Temple, looking like it had just been built. Interior of Pitkins, way back when, before it was remodeled. You Note know, the tin ceiling. And this was the soda fountain in the old part. Before they cut, they tore the center wall out and modernized it. And the bank, that's without the man standing there. And again, that's that's unusual. They have you don't find a lot of interior shots up here, the windows that are there. Uh, this is uh, if you remember, this is up on the 600 block. Uh, it was a video store, and then it uh, most recently. But cars. this is with horse and buggy, uh, the same hotel building, but instead of cars, uh, horse and buggy. This one, I saw this card. And I looked for it and looked for it, and 20 years later I found it. That's Colby Street. That's the Whitehall Cemetery. Oh. And uh, here's a car coming up the street, leaving town, going out of Whitehall. Dirt road, into, and that's the dip. And of course, this has all been reconfigured. Uh, the, here's some headstones, and I someday I'm going to see if that one can be found in the cemetery. But of course, now huge concrete wall there, and it's a uh, four-lane speedway. <laughs> well, what it is. And that was part of the idea of a tannery, and here's some storage buildings. Tan doesn't have the water tower on yet. Smokestack is there. There's a, I don't know, probably bringing bark, I'm just guessing. But it uh, looks like the building's complete, because down here's the part that was the lower part. Um, I, okay, the Iowa. We got uh, the the resorts. That was the Iowa, which was across from where the White Lake Villa was, which is now the uh, Eagles. And okay, let's go. And another shot of the villa. It had several buildings, and they evolved over the years. Some taken down, others put up. Uh, that's a, a, I remember it like that, yeah. um, with the sign out on uh, Lake Street, and these buildings along here, there were some cottages, and then a main building. I think we got the dining room in here. That's, this is the Idlewild, this is the Idlewild's uh, dining room. Kind of remember, reminds me of Murray's Inn. I've got a picture of Murray's Inn, not here, but also. And again, um, the Idlewild, that's their main building. They have a sign up there on the side. And uh, that, that, there was the side, that's where the, the sign, and this is the you know, activity area. And again, I think they slipped some of these. I was told by people that should know. Move, can you move it? OK. That all of these places had uh, slot machines. And they had a they had a phone tree, and when they knew that the nabs were coming to, to raid the slot machines, they you know I called you and you called two people and they called two more people and they got the word out on both sides of the lake. You know they all had it wasn't just this side. Now hold on. I believe this is Main Street. It says Street on the south of Whitehall, south part of Whitehall. Now, I believe this is that that house is on Main Street, and this. And it looks, see, and the lake is down there. So I, I really think that's Main Street. It doesn't identify it as such. And that's got to be Main Street going down the hill. Okay? Now, anybody remember that? I don't. Sure. Yeah, I know. Charlie does. And this is uh, the White Lake Villa. And this is the uh, slide they had out into the water. And uh, that was at the uh, villa, okay? And there's a, 
sorry. I'm sorry. There's, this says Johnson's Resort, and this is the house on the corner where Eleanor Carlson lives today, Charlie's sister. And this building is gone. It was like a dorm, wasn't it? The rooms, Charlie? Right. Where people slept in that. Okay. And there's a closer shot of the house on the corner at the bottom of Main and Lake Street. Yeah. That's the house, and that sign says White Lake Villa, da 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 da. That's the dining room of the White Lake Villa. And, uh, oh, Charlie must have had some good connections with bourbon or something, because there's a, about a zillion different interior shots, you know, different arrangements for the tables and things. But uh, that's, and I can remember when it looked like that when uh, Eagles first took it over, and when it was the villa. That's and see, there's a, yeah, and there's a different arrangement of the tables. I threw a couple in there. Yeah. There is from the lake, and this building is gone. This building is what, if you go to the Eagles, this was what they took and made into their present clubhouse. Now, these two buildings sat, there's a little creek or a stream that runs through there, and they sat on the other side of it, and they were like guest houses, and I had to throw that one in because my wife <coughs> lived in, with her sister the first year they taught at White Off when I met her. They lived in one of these, I don't remember which one. She, she lived in one of those. And this is another resort that you don't hear that much about that was in the city of Whitehall. Uh, and it was uh, what we now know as Lion's Den. And it was called Albumar. And uh, they were big on these multi-scenes. There's a couple of them in there. Here's some people splashing around the water. Here's the, the waterfall. And that's the house. That's the building. Okay. And here's another shot of, here's a gal and they <coughs> standing in front of the waterfall. They didn't do all that, they didn't have all that technology today, so I'm not really sure if they, how they did that. And there's the waterfall, Lion's Den. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, those trees I, I think are gone, I'm pretty sure. Uh, now, we got a few shots of Division Street. I think this is, no, we got some churches. This is the Swedish church, that's Lebanon, and this was the parsonage, which is long gone. Now, when I was uh, a couple years younger than I am now, that was always referred to as the Swedish church. And then what the Mission Covenant Church was the uh, or whatever they call it now, was the Mission Covenant or the Swedish Covenant Church. The church in Montague was the German Lutheran Church. You know, now it's St. It's St. James. But that's the way the, uh, I shouldn't say old timers, because it might offend some. But uh, anyway, that was the, uh, that's what that was. Uh, this was the Maples Motel on Mears Avenue. We're doing some Mears Avenue stuff. And this is the house that sat on the corner where now they got a little fountain or something. And I do, that's where I deliver newspapers. Yeah, okay. That was a morning they, house. They deliver newspapers. I deliver newspapers there. Okay. Let's keep tracking. Uh, Bunker Hill. How many of you know that Bunker Hill? I remember my, my dad bought a lot one time, and he's talking about it was in Bunker Hill. And I thought, boy, we're going to go out east. And, uh, I didn't know that Bunker Hill is the corner of Mears and Muskegon Avenue. Mears, Dirt Road, okay, or building, uh, what was the, the two stores, the, the, the two sisters. And over here, over here was the wooden bridge that went over the uh, railroad tracks. And if you really, if we're doing it right, you're, you could make your car go airborne over that. <laughs> Couldn't you, Officer Smith? <laughs> okay? <laughs> but that's Bunker Hill, folks. And we, could you back up just a little bit, please? Thank you. Uh, and you'll note there's a grade there kind of going down. And if, if you look 
it, it goes the other way down. So there is a little bit of a hill there. And I understand they had the Swing Town kids and the Bunker Hill gang and the downtown kids. This is the Newfer House. The Newfer House, which was moved back and had some porches put back on. And uh, that's just by the gully. Okay? Yeah. Let's go. And uh, this was the Grove. That's where Clark Funeral Home is now. That was called the Grove. It was all full of trees. And they had some ch Chautauquas there. Uh, and they had tents, I guess, over in this park here. There were some openings. But that was on Mears Avenue. And that's, of course, the famous Newfer Adams Playhouse. Uh, shortly after it was built. And uh, you'll note there's a building next to it, which is now their parking lot. And that building was a, a rooming house also. Yep. 1917, yeah. So that was the same year it was done. It's interesting to read some of these. And I'll tell you, if some people thought these things would survive and you'd be reading them, a uh, hundred years maybe or so later, they'd have never written what they did. I'm here to tell you that. This is the Norwegian Lutheran Church uh, because, you know, it's like Muskegon. They got, you know, all of my, I got a very good friend involved in the Catholic Church down there. You know, they had German, French, uh, and Polish. Da, da, da. Norwegian was on the corner of Muskegon and Division. Henry. Rossler was telling me he's kind of a weird that. And then they finally came and met up with the Swedes, you know. And uh, now, that house that I, I told you was next to the uh, playhouse, that's it. Cottage Grove. Okay, let's move on. Now, uh, the Lewis House, Mears Avenue, and Mud Hole. This is the area we call the Grove. Interestingly, folks, that I mentioned, you know, that's where a clock funeral home is. Uh, that was uh, Purdy's, you know, prior to that, but it was actually built by the G's, and the G's were going to have a funeral home there. And I think it is a long story, but he died, and his wife Ruby, uh, and boy, I've heard stories about Ruby, uh, but uh, she had a boyfriend who was the sports editor of the Grand Rapids Herald. And he used to come up on weekends, and the story was that they used to buy, uh, just socially, I'm sure. Yeah. And uh, they got into a big argument. Apparently, uh, he wanted to marry her, and she didn't, because uh, she said, you drink too much, and that was sort of the pot clunk out of line. But uh, anyway, son heard all this in the basement, ran upstairs, said, you can't talk to blah, blah, blah. my mother like that. He shot the guy, because he'd been out squirrel hunting. He got off. The whole front page was King Crown, the whole page was about it. And they were talking about he was really a nice boy and all this. And nobody seems to know what uh, happened to him. I asked Mary G. She's not sure. Now, when you go down Mears Avenue, all you see is dirt. There was an iron bridge there, the gully. And this is the gully. And uh, the, the bridge, and I'm reasonably sure that this was taken. Uh, west of it looking east but i could be wrong uh dr gibbs sandy gibbs owns all that property there so she probably knows again this was one of those see that's number 43 or 93. the guy wrote i mean he just he he, he went all over the area montague white off he's he, better than 100 cards and uh here we've got the um so 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 beach we just put that in there because it was the hotel Okay, and again, he wrote, see, the guy kept writing Now, The Meinhardy building sat out on Mears Avenue, uh, about two doors from Muskegon and Mears. There's a little machine shop there, and then you come back this way, about two doors, and this building still exists. It was moved back to the alley, and way back in the, 70s, Ed Volk, now, who's now deceased, had 
the, the two girls, the mine hardy girls, were going to sign it over. They were going to move it down to where the railroad, uh, the caboose is. And the, went the next morning, Ed dragged and uh, they said, oh, we couldn't get up in the morning and not see Papa's building. Mm -hmm. Got an agreement, the people will let the building go, and they want to move it back, they want to move it down there by the caboose. It is a classic storefront. The Lewis House, when it was known as Lakeview no. Rooms, overlooking White Lake, and again, I delivered newspapers there. Uh, tragic, tragic story there. It's been talked about at a meeting, I think, last year, and there are some fellows that are relatives of them. Uh, this is uh, Pitkin Bow, Clarence. He uh, kept that, I believe, at the tannery, if my memory is right. I uh, heard uh, Ann and their dad told me those stories. Well, what you started to say about the tragic story about the Hilda? Well, the there, was, uh, there was two, two people died there. There was an explosion in the basement. Yeah. The Methodist Church, and uh, churches were, were pretty popular for postcards. And the Methodist Church seems to be the one that has the most shots in Whitehall. That and the Congregational Church. Uh, I think maybe because they were right downtown. Uh, and uh, this is the Methodist Church before it was added on to. And you know, there's additions and there's additions. You can go around and, and you can see the good ones and the bad ones. And I will say, my personal feeling is they did a good job of this. They blended it in. And if I drove down Division Street right now, I would not know, you know, that that whole part had been added on because it looks like the building was built all at once. And it, it really a quality job. You need to look at that next time you're down there. And uh, this is the Congregational Church. And uh, I think I've got a couple more, but you know, they have a beautiful, beautiful spire here uh, at Tower. And they had a couple sets of doors, you see the two doors. And I never can remember anyone going in and out of this one. If they used it maybe for funerals, took the boxes in and out or what, I don't know. Don't move it yet, because next to that is a very significant house. I grew up, I grew up in that house, and uh, you can spot it. And I do believe it probably had uh, several colors on it from looking at these different pictures and uh, you know, scraping at it. But uh, that was a coal house. It sat empty, and then my dad bought it. And I found some neat stuff. Again, part of that set. That guy was he, there. Now there is the steeple. Wasn't that magnificent? And they just tore it all down to about here, put a flat roof on it. The other door and for taking clothes. Taking what? In the winter time, took you went in and you took her boots and clothes off. Oh well, okay. I thought maybe boxes. These trees now are way up there. This again, not a lot of interior shots, but this, the tenders floating around. And man, they, they had, wow, look at those pipes. Now, a sad story about this. Uh, they redid their stained glass windows when I, in my youth. Some of you may remember. They just, and they took the windows out and just dumped them in the yard. My dad, being a fisherman, went and dug out the lead a couple years ago. I sold them that. I got with them. But, uh, you know, to stained glass window? To do that today? This is that house. The church is here. This is it from the looking the other way. Divisions of Dirt Street. Uh, this house originally sat uh, where the bank is, Colby and Mears. It was moved. If you look at the 1880 bird's eye print of Whitehall, there's a blank here. There's a house here, and there's a house on the corner. Mike Coble lived on the corner. Louis Berman, the editor, lived there. And then I grew up here. That was my bedroom window. And uh, this house was moved and added onto. It's in one of Fred Norman's paintings. And Coble, you know, told me all about this, and told me as a young boy, a little boy, he remembered going in that house and described a lot of it. And the next year, when he came back, we were going to go through it. Goes to Florida and dies. I mean, you know, people, you know, it is. Now, stop, stop a second. 
Just a second. You see this? It's just the address. Uh, 1908, and they had the card, and that's when it did change. This side is exclusively for the address. Okay, uh, going down division, not a lot of stuff on division. The Seeger House, and uh, that's uh, at the corner of uh, Sophia and division. And this uh, this house is still there, uh, and there's. The Browns are here, they are right in there. And look at those trees, again, beautiful trees. A different shot in this, this is LG Seeger's red. So that's a nice shot of it. This, oh, I'm, you gotta keep on me, girls. And that's the Seeger house, that's behind the Maples Motel. That's one of the classic houses. Unfortunately, a lot of the neat houses <coughs> in Whitehall got torn down. I'd like to think today people would stand out there and say, no way, where that uh, fifth, or that PNC Bank uh, is. Uh, the Linderman House, and uh, Mrs. Linderman was a uh, watercolor uh, painter, and she did some paintings uh, around the area. Uh, not many of them that I know of, maybe some of you have some. Uh, and uh, then there was a Coval House and the Simonson House. The Simonson House got saved and moved. And the house where the parking lot is, uh, in uh, the city parking lot, where, uh, yeah, across the Baker lived, that got saved and moved up by Funnel Field. And uh, that wasn't a really a remarkable house. It was just a house. But the Coval House there had a beautiful carriage barn, it's gone building gone. Across the street where Verizon is, that was a beautiful Coble house gone. This card is a double. Now, remember I said uh, one side was for address, one side was for writing. And you can see the scene here. This is actually two cards. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people just ripped them apart and uh, wrote the address and then scribbled on the other side. Uh, this one is intact. <coughs> okay. Oh. So what house did you say that? Was? No, this is. Uh, I'm sorry. This is where the pack rats were. Uh, where uh, Byams lived. This is the uh, Slocum Street, which is now a, a path, a bikeway. And this is the city waterworks. And then it became the sewage lift station. And now the county has it. Uh, okay. That's a double. You can see here the double. This and this, this side is exclusively for the address. And then, <clears throat> this one is Division Street. It happens to be uh, that house showing up again that I lived in. Across the street, uh, the Browers, the, Co uh, the Radcliffs, and again, a dirt road. You can see White Hall was progressive, wooden sidewalks, huh? And, uh, and that's the back side again, here and here. I did find this set separate. It had been torn apart and mailed separately. I did find one, but they're, uh, they're hard to find. Okay? That's it. Okay. Uh, we're, they're going to throw us out in 10 minutes. Somebody turn the lights on. That's because we haven't found it. Okay, and they may be out there. I know there's an interior shot of the goody goody. Uh, I know one exists. I don't have it. And there's a couple others, but maybe, you know, I, like I said, I, that one coming up uh, by the cemetery, I looked for that for 20 years and found it. And uh, I've got, this is just uh, you know, a little sliver. Uh, I'll show you what these doubles look like if I draw them. Uh, <coughs> like I said, Murray's in. I got a stack that's uh, you know, the Yacht Club. The Yacht Club has their White Lake Day and all that stuff. Sylvan Beach, they go on forever. Those are places that people mail cards from. You see, this is what a double looks like. And uh, you could write on this side, this side, 
hook it together and uh, be on your way. And these were penny postcards. It was the communication of the time. Today, they email or text, drive down the road, email, you know, it's a different world. Anyway, I hope uh, you enjoyed some of those. I've got as many or more Montague, uh, all the resorts up and down the lake, the lighthouse, the life saving station, uh, and I don't know, probably, uh, I might try weighing them. I you know, <laughs> think I'll take enough to get a pound and then or, or wait and figure out, count them and do that. But I am going to, uh, this was good the, to do this because Tanya bugged me to do this and it got me started and I've got them pretty well cataloged. The Wasapi has their 100th anniversary next year and uh, the two men that really saved the Wasapi are going to be out there week after this. A uh, guy by the name of Chauncey Neisel writes for the Chicago Trib, and uh, Joe Sainer is the vice president of Baxter Labs, and they're doing a book. And I told them I'd bring my philosophy cards. See, you know, the, the scouts came here, they sent a penny postcard back to mom and dad or whatever, and on and on and on. Roger. When are you and Tanya going to do the postcard book? Uh, you know, <laughs> give me a couple years <laughs> because, uh, you know, people have a bucket list. I got a barrel list, okay? And I'm so far behind I can never die. Is that when you're <laughs>